Welcome back to another tournament match. This is round two of the European bracket and we have uh, the Romanian on Romanian violence. It's going to be a special one. We have Razvan versus uh, Houston and uh, we know these guys are buddies IRL. Houston and as a matter of fact brought Razvan into this but um, we've heard a little bit of trash talk even before this when Razvan won his uh, first round match against the less cool pimp card. He said that uh, Houston is going to taste defeat in this second round so we'll see if uh, they'll be able to back up what they're trying to what they're trying to achieve here and uh, of course to you Jay, it's a bit of a special one because this match will determine your opponent in the semi-finals yes it will so before we get into this whole thing let me remind you to drop a like on the video and uh, subscribe to our channel uh, to not miss any of the upcoming stuff and uh, JJ, what are we looking at with these players? Well, Razan up top, he's bringing Galcron Shaman, Dragon Mage, Spell Druid, and his Galcron Secret Rogue is banned. Bang. Houston is also bringing Galcron Secret Rogue, which is not banned, a Spell Druid, and his Galcron Control Work, which he is currently playing, and his Tempo Demon Hunter is banned. Bang. So, who do we like in this matchup? It's kind of tough to call. Uh, some a little more yeah, exclusive decks. On, on both sides, but uh, definitely good mix-up. I find it very interesting, uh, I must say, that Razvan decided to ban the Demon Hunter over the Warlock, which seems like the deck that one the lot of players would intuitively ban. Now, I know that Razvan doesn't have the most aggressive yeah, lineup. Razvan is a cr has a pretty heavy control lineup here, so he might want to get rid of the more aggressive thing. Just take it easy, want to uh, pull the games out to, to go along, and, you know, take his time. Uh, outvalue. Oof. And this first matchup is already a pretty good candidate for a, a long one because we have control on control violence there the warlock against the uh, the dragon mage Yes um, you, uh, Control decks right control decks man in this tournament. That's like the strongest thing you can have. It's true. Yes It doesn't happen a lot a lot of people bring aggro aggro has been successful We've had a bit of an aggro meta um, but uh, maybe with the control decks they're bringing they might have the antidote. Frost Nova going to pull out here seems very effective. Yeah, and there we go. Put we... some Doomsayer with it, and there's not going to be too much to be done about that Doomsayer. He could play a Flames here and say no, you. But yeah, but he... that doesn't really do anything. <laughs> well, it opens a, a hand space if you want to tap. Yeah. Then you'd probably rather just uh, sack back. Let's see who decides to do anything. He could get a free invoke. But of course, he's sacking a big thing for that. He ditched the coin or sack back, like we mentioned. That's what he does. I mean, after the tap, that was a very good um, situation because he did have six points of damage exactly. Oh, so healing five of those is pretty good. This board will get cleared. Yeah, but I mean, there's not that much on there, right? Like, in terms of Frost Nova and Doomsayer, I've seen worse things happen. It can become quite a lot if he does get the buffs out, but uh, I think he wants to make sure Ra uh, Razvan does there, just get rid of it. There we go, Doomsayer goes crazy. Nothing for the Dragon Caster still. Malagos is possible, but the question is, do you know at this point what spell you want? Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's oftentimes you play the Reactionary, in this case you have sort of a luxury to play it out fast and just tempo it. Pick whatever you know is best value option. Maybe tome it's might not be horrible. You might go tome. It's actually a lot like a ballist's tome, despite the art suggesting a comparison to a different card here. Um, I like tome here. He decides to go with the Nova. Yes, Nova definitely can knock it. He's got a stall for one mana on hand. I assume we'll just see another invoke. Uh, seems very plausible. We. Could also see no. I was about to say we could also see Veil vale Illusionist, but it's just yeah. overdrawing like crazy. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't hate in this position a Shield of Galcrond, it's very plausible. Uh, freeze up the. If you wanted to play the Worshipper, you'd have to point first, then play it, and play another card. Yeah, you could, you could do it. I don't know. That seems excessive. It might. I think. Shield pass is a He's perfectly reasonable play here. You could clear the Malagos. Yes. But is the Malagos really that threatening? I don't know. It's a dragon. 
Yeah, but it's a 2 8. Closely related to geese and other birds. Sometimes. Not that. So, so maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, ooh, Calico's ooh, picked up. Another one. Back to back blue dragons. See what he decides to go with. Corner Cold mm. seems to sort of be the, the yeah, the, the pick that makes sense with what he seems to be going for. And he's building a dragon army. And now there is a dragon on board that I think is a lot more worrying. It's true. Another worshipper picked up. Could just clear this whole thing up with Dark Skies if he wants to push the reset button. Dark Skies, you can then ditch the coin and play a worshipper if you want to draw some more cards. You also, I believe... But then he would still have to... Wait, doesn't he have 10 cards on hand already? Yeah. yeah. So he'd have to play Dark Skies, yeah. coin, worshipper, and another card. If he doesn't want to overdraw one. Correct. He doesn't want to overdraw, yeah, that seems... Which will probably depend on if you pick up Galakron with us, too. Yeah, I... Don't hate Dark Skies, I think Worshipper might be a little excessive still. Um, Nether Breath is possible to just clear off the more threatening one. Again, Melagos is just a 2 8 or at this point a 2 7. It doesn't do much for being on the board. He's Goose, though. It's, he really isn't. He kind of is, though. That's what his name suggests. It really doesn't. It does. Have you read it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Going off sack back, so maybe that is the the play he's gonna be making here. Seems like he wants to draw those cards. Seems like he wants to get his Galakron early yeah. and um, push that worshiper. Worst case scenario, you can ditch a coin, and he probably will. No Galakron picked up. So Both Alexstrasza's draw. So that coin no. needs to go. A lot of dragon value drawn. The Galakron, remind me if I'm wrong, is one invocation away from being fully done. I believe so. Yes. If I've been keeping track correctly, we'll see. And. uh... We're getting kind of what we projected here, big value matchup, they're taking it super slow, almost unconventional for what we've seen so far, Arcane Breath there, get that worship out. Contrast Calling is very interesting mm -hmm. with Malagos. Exactly, if that... You've got a 2-1 on board, you're getting 2-4, 5-4 for it? And that's why you kill geese, because they, they turn into big birds, or big other things if you leave them alone. Let's see what he does here, I feel like Netherwing is quite a tempting play. Yeah, I mean it perfectly clears the board. It gets rid of any threats. You are arguably on the offensive here with all the stuff you have on hand. So you might not even hate... Is there anyone on the offensive in this situation? I feel like they're both kind of playing a game of chicken. Or goose for that matter. Just waiting. <laughs> a game of goose. A game of goose. That's when you. That's like a game of chicken, but dragons are involved. Or specifically, blue dragons. Who's Ooh, that? Who's power that? of creation draw. <laughs> Plays it with the Dragon Caster, it seems. For, you know, that little bit of extra mana efficiency. What are we getting? Um, more Threat? Harpies might make sense. Scribe. Those were all good picks. Uh, I like the Scribe. I don't hate the Scribe, but I think on an empty board, I might like the Lord of the Arena good better. Stick, good sticking power, though. Um, Not an empty board, either. Well, mostly empty board. And the thing with the Scribes is that if both die simultaneously, they... Have they summon more than I would the assume this is gonna get cleared up fully? Just hit the dragon cast for dark skies and then they're the wing to kill all the scrolls because they don't want to mess with any of that. Uh, yeah. Um, if you want it to be ultra aggressive, you could push uh, classic Alex and hit face, put him down to 10. Oh, that actually and is... say and say, uh, dude, those, <clears throat> those, um. Breaths are gonna get you next turn. Yeah, Nether Breath and Nether Wing on hand is already uh, seven points of damage. And with the uh, Hogar whatever two drop guy that Sam I can never remember, Opili. Morg Artificer deal double damage to minions. Is it Morg Artificer? Yes, oh. he he, he um, makes your spells deal twice yeah, damage know, to minions. I know what he does. Two <clears throat> minions. Two minions. All right. I knew it what doesn't he does. make <clears throat> it lethal. Okay, I didn't know his name though. It doesn't work on face. Okay. I didn't know his name. There's a goose. So I'll see what he picks up. Well, I mean, you're probably going to play yeah. it with something else, but, uh, you know. Oh, like, that's, a, that's a good pick. Gets ooh, picked up. That thing is like quite to see that. colossal, see if that. you will. Could draw some cards. Uh, Mark is possible with another breath to kill the giant. Or the colossus. 
Um, Frankly, not active, notably. Any minion plus plague would also deal with the board, but not with the death Ga rattle. For Gyaka here, right? It's gonna be a big impact. Zephyr's drawn, and now he's active. As is now the Dragon Queen, of course, as he picked Yeah, that. because he drew the coil. So do you have anything great to do with Zephyrus right now? I don't think for four. Next turn he'll maybe pick up Natalie Selene or something, just for a super value. Oh, you could actually uh, coil here with uh, another wing. Yep. Draw another card. No, you'll, you'll resummon another one. Yeah, but that means that you could do it. If you clear it next turn, you're gonna have a very definitive clear, yeah. rather than leaving something hanging. Then looks like that's what I don't hate it. Um, twisting except twisting them. Still no Galakrond. So this you at what at what point is he gonna push that that Kronks? Only if he feels like he needs to play the Galakrond soon or lose. I think this is such a heavy value matchup that you can't afford to lose any bit of value there. I think. Definitely ahead in drawing. Uh, actually, what mana cost is this thing technically? It's a 7 drop, so. Just thinking, Condras is still around and he picks the 6 drop, which I guess is yeah. more value. Picks up a Varanus and a Priestess of a Loom. Yeah. Um, a low average outcome. I mean, a 7, 6, and 5, 4 is. Probably rather close to the average outcome, actually. There is a couple of underset at 6 drops, so... You know, could be worse. Uh, by the way, that's an argument for the 7 drop rather than 6 drop. I think there's more underset at 6 drops than 7 drops. Mm -hmm. uh, though some it of those... used to be worse, but still... I was to say, a lot of these the aren't in standard anymore, but... Is it Zeph time now? Um... Or Dragon Queen? Or do you just... Twisting that is also possible. Mm -hmm. Because what are you gonna get out of that? Do you pull Twisting Nether if you might if you can just use like a Plague of Flames or something? Here's a question, right? If you if you if you play Zeph, is it gonna give you um uh Shadow Flame? Because Shadow Flame would clear. Would it? Because Mark is still on board. Oh, with the with the Worshipper. Yeah, with the Worshipper, Mark, it deals ten to every enemy minion. You could get a Natalie Selene and build your own stuff, but I feel like invoke and just Wait, is it spell damage? I don't even know, but uh, um, but um, just invoke what? and play the Plague of Flames. The Shadow Flame, the Shadow Flame doesn't count as spell damage. I've never it really thought about that. Deals damage equal to and it's attack, yeah. And the Mork just says uh, minions take twice as much damage from spells. So I, I'm, I'm not sure why he would go twisting Nether over Plague. Well, um, I guess you have Plague in the future, but for cheaper. Especially yeah. with the Galagrond hero point. I guess point, but in this point, in this case, he would have had to play another minion that he maybe didn't want when to. Here comes the value, big, big death rattles. I like to see that. Ancient mysteries picked up, and his ice barrier. I definitely like that too. Just some protection. No Galagrond. Um, there is of course another potential um, Plague of Flames play here now, if you wanted. Um, how about three dragons? I think at this point it might be worth it. The point is, if you don't get a single one with taunt or healing, then you do kind of risk. I guess it will be one off pyroblast. I was about to say risk dying to pyro, but it's one off, and there's no more mana left after. So played both dragoncasters already. So I guess you could do it. It's tough because both of those decks have a potential to really go crazy with damage out of nowhere. Yeah, and we've seen both players, you know, put an effort to try and stay above that like 20, 15 to 20 health mark. Yeah, and so that's exactly why I would be worried if my opponent has 10 health, uh, 10 attack on board, and you're playing something that doesn't directly defend against. Goes F. I feel like that's probably the best play here. Gets an Natalie Selene, so that could be uh, could be the move. Picks up ruins. That clears it up. And then something and plague maybe. Felbold works too. It's gonna keep one. That plague seems to be very important, so keep that around. But he does decide to clear most of it up. That Reno is a bit weird on the hand for Razvan, so yeah. it'll probably stick for a bit. It's typically not always great in these matchups. I wouldn't be surprised if we just saw a Whelp come down and then uh, something rather passive overall. You push a little bit of extra damage in the face. Uh, maybe you trade into the uh, Zeph even. Turtle down. 
Well. Oh, do it. Oh, he's gonna do it. There we go. This might be the decisive play. Eye beams, his minions, lightning bolts, the opponent's face. face. Zack packs nothing. nothing. Starfire hits face. Oof. Own face, that is. Bog beam hits one minion, of course. Friendly one, of course. Naturally. Um, Drain life, friendly minion. Yup. Friendly minion. Hidden oasis, heals back to full. Mirror image. And power creation is a good one. It turns off around there at the end. Yeah. I've definitely seen worse puzzle boxes. See better, see worse. See better. About average. So now I feel like you need to pull this Plague of Flames out though, right? Yes, you can definitely build that board. Um, but let's see. Just one invoke. Just Yeah, you just need Dragon Blood Cultist or Devoted Maniac. Mm. Uh, you hit the Zeph into one of the mirror entities. Um, I believe oh, you know right now that, that the secret is not a problem. True. Um, if there if there is still a chance this mirror entity, which we know it's Ice Barrier, but uh, it can be I don't think it could be counter. No, no, we've seen a million spells. If there is still a chance for uh, Houston that it's uh, that it's mirror entity, then, you play, then you play Maniac because then you can guarantee that you still. Get to clear off two minions before and that's play. Really well. Plague of Flames coming down. Clear this whole mass off and we're back to square one. You might also legitimately like the Dragon Blight better for after the plague rather than the um, Maniac after the plague. Plays Fiendish Rites instead. Yeah. One more invoke. Probably has enough anyway. I mean, he has enough. That's the Puts thing. Him down. Um, do you that Prongs needs to come down soon, man. The question is would you prefer Dragon Blight or um, Fiendish Rites? He went with Fiendish Rites. At the end of the day, the stats are similar, and they both die just as well to AoE, so... No more secrets in deck. That gives a quite a bit away. Yeah, I think he only runs the Ice Barrier, yeah, so... And he has the other one on hand, so he just popped that spell. But this feels like hand. a good round for uh, Alexstrasza. For Dragon Queen, yeah. S yes, that Alexstrasza, exactly. Could play the other one, never get more value out of it than right now. Well, but what if you already have 15 damage aboard from your first Dragon yeah, Queen, well, Alexstrasza? You might, next turn. That's, Probably won't. That's the thing, right? Optimally, and it, it rarely happens. You play Alexstrasza for a direct lethal. Yeah. Usually can't rely on that. He's looking at the shield. <laughs> and it's always, like, it's always like a chess game of just getting all of the board players faded out somehow, right? But, of course, Razavan has a handful of those. Still has the Blizzard, he still has that Malagoose's Nova and the Cone of Cold, and another puzzle box for just to you know, pull the emergency trigger. Yeah, and Reno. Reno also clears the board. Jackson, yeah. <laughs> There's so much here that can clear the board. This is already a very complex first match. A very complex first game, so this is gonna go for a long time, it feels like. Okay, clears up the board, plays the Makes shield. Off. Taking it easy. How long can you go without pulling that girl right now? I think you can afford to wait, because if he plays the Dragon Queen, it's almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. Here's comes the puzzle box, taking another risk as Razvan, see that's, what happens. That's what I don't really love about this, because you are taking a quite significant risk that it backfires. Mm -hmm. The more minions the opponent has on board, the more stuff you can buff, but also the more Likely it is that stuff gets killed on his opponent's some, board. Some draws out. Ooh, oh, the no, Grand Slam is a good, good pick up for sure. Does, however, heal Houston quite a bit. As a matter of yes. fact, back to full. Morally struck it, and now we're just... Hero is immune, but... And by the way, Blur as the first spell out of the puzzle box was really good. It can also be overdrawing the area, because it, it, it ensures him against a couple of the other crazy things that could occur. It's true. Uh, what time is it here? Decision time for Houston, that's what it is. Yeah, it looks like Dragon it might be Queen. Dragon Queen time. Um, just thinking... There isn't that many dragons that can deal the four to the Nagrans, and there's... Twilight Drake! Why not? Four! One in 88 chance this happens, but there we are. Wait, what? One in 88 chance to get two Twilight Drakes. 88 is not even a square number, how does that happen? Well, because it's two different breaks. Yes. 
There's 44, 44 dragons, I think. Yeah, so it's one over 44 squared. Okay. Well, but the first dragon has a chance, has a four, one in 44 chance. And the second dragon has one in 44 nice. chance. Those multiply together to get exactly two Twilight Dragons. These are pretty average. Last, last part in the deck. And I think we might just... Oh, no, he, no, there's a... Mm. And there's a Doomsayer. Mm -hmm. oh. How about you, Alex, your opponent's face right here? Take one shot, like, this now, Galakron, like, I have three turns now, Alex, Prong, Alex, Galakron, Prongs, in that order. Also, sometimes control matchups do later come one. down to just who draws less. Ooh, fast. <laughs> sure. Hey. I ain't gonna do much, but... Why not? But now do you deter your opponent from playing his own life, also, With that. Yeah, I think, I think now's Galakron time. Gotta be, right? I mean, I would've generally said that um, without any Doomsayer or something on board, Got but... Got just a cultist. And there's a Tots. Yes. Uh, that is good to see. Plus... Of course, the end of turn effect does not go off because no demons in deck. Plus a Demon Hunter card. Uh, yes, there is a... As a matter of fact, there is a Demon that is a Hunter card and an actual Demon Hunter card. Yes. So strong. A lot of health for Razman, though. It's tough. Yeah, and, and... You could probably just sit this out with, with all the Frost Novas and Ooh. the... Uh... There is a Pyroblast there's on Pyro... hand. I don't think he's winning this turn. No, but still, there's Not a Pyroblast removal. on hand. What removal? But he, ha he still has a Frost Nova. He still has two Blizzards. There's no reason he should take damage here anytime soon, so he should probably just sit. Regular Arkstraza notably, of course, does not uh, kill armor. Anymore? Anymore. <laughs> remember the Arkstraza nerf? I don't remember it, but I, I know it existed. Quite frankly, don't remember it either. I just remember hearing of it. I never had an Arkstraza early on. I don't know if I have one now. Anyways, uh, I guess we're going to see uh, Kronks here for the uh, taunt. Got it. And maybe I like cultist. No, we just see the hero power. And I You'll just get looks out, like there's gonna be a blizzard there. Mind control is we'll not nice. We'll just take it. Didn't even need it. You can just freeze. Cali goose with something nasty coming up. Take oh it not. my! And uh, just sitting back, Sarazvan saying, "I got this." And this first match to like 20 minutes. And he got it. Because uh, all he drew throughout his entire deck. I have a that. feeling this is going to be the longest matchup in the tournament Yeah, so it could be. Because this is more like it's going to be played again. So Houston Resize, game number one. And that's a one nothing lead for Raz by War. Uh, as he takes it with the with the Dragon Mage. Yeah, this is, this is going to take a bit. Because they're both... Well, especially Raz is, is a heavy control player. And uh, let's see, uh, see what Houston is going to... Going to decide to do here. I mean, obviously, Razvan can play the mage again at the very mm -hmm. least. Uh, Spell Druid is definitely not as much of a control deck. It is definitely a slower is. deck, but it's not a control deck. Uh, Shaman is a control deck. Um, I feel like almost when you're when you're used to, when you're used to first of all, I think maybe you should have played uh, should have banned uh, the mage or, or the, the shaman. shaman. Uh, that being said, would agree. At this point, I think your strategy has to be to run over the Druid whenever so that happens. Let's go with Warlock again, and we're gonna have another control matchup, so, hey. I mean, yeah, I think going control is your best choice if you don't know that it's guaranteed to be Druid that you're yeah. facing. Once you're facing Druid, you might want to run over with the other decks first. It's a pretty good starting hand um, for Razvan, though. Like Fusen's that. starting hand has a lot of those cards that you won, but not necessarily on the beginning. Point, yeah. By the way, this whole thing is, of course, sponsored by Beverage. Consume it. It hydrates you. Notably, beverage does not condone coffee. Let's see what he's got here. Nah, it's still a bit clunky. I think we might just see good coin start. totem. It's a good start. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever you have the evil totem, you coin it out. Because then on turn two, you can play the quest. You can still play it. With a lackey. That is how that goes. Felbold easily and then slap play, go. yeah. It has to go. I mean, that was also just a good play in general. Uh, comes quest. We might not see the lackey. 
He has pretty good curve, so why not play it now, right? You have desert hair, and then you have... Uh, yeah, fair enough. We have the end bow. Tap coming down right away, Houston playing... And Dragon's a big bro. Right now playing a lot faster than he did in the last game, but I think once the more... So far, it is pretty simple. ...dense decision phase comes into play... There's a Cobalt Lackey, not exactly what you love to see in this point. I think... wing is a very important one, and we're gonna see this in like two turns, is how important that actually was. Yeah. To be picked up. I think, um, considering that you have Desert here, you probably want to see a Witchy Lackey at some point. Well, these Shamans do like pulling a Cheapo sometimes with the Bloodlust. So you definitely want to make sure you keep your board control. And it looks like, yeah, he much rather keeps the 2 1 elemental than the 1 1 lackey, and that makes sense. Shield of Galakron yep. seems like a good answer. Not necessarily the Netherwing turn, you know your opponent goes wide a lot, so. Is it Galakron already fully upgraded? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Never mind. That's... <laughs> that doesn't work. It, I was about to say, that doesn't seem no. right. But he got two invokes out. It, it's just that, you know, the. Um, the World of Calcron is just by far the co most colorful one, even on the middle stage. That's a pretty good involve. He's gonna like yes. that one, the reoccurring villain. Yeah, imagine you could buff it. Actually, you probably can with a freaking uh, Goblin Lackey. You might at some point, yeah. So you might actually be able to recur it. Recur it. Um, those are some good draws. Not as much the pack right now, though. It uh, could very well heal him back to full. But then Moark might come into play later on. I'm gonna build your hand up a little bit. I think, uh, I think he's gonna like that. He's got another invoke too, so... He, and this time, notably, the Galakrond there early. Last last game, of course, he got a bit screwed over by having the Galakrond be the literal bottom card in this deck. So. Yeah, I think Desert Hair and an attack with a weapon seems like a pretty good yeah. circumstance, maybe. Uh, obviously, you hit with a villain before you attack with a weapon. Let me double desert air. Oh yeah, full hair. You never go full hair. You never go full hair unless you do. And you like evolving those a lot. Yes. Random four of a one one. Don't mind if I do. Old totem instead makes sense. Not as good of a target as the hair because those are all considered one drops. But you know, once did anything but the villain, of course. Oh, it hits all. Oh, it hits all of them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's not one. Which is why double hair would have made even more sense, I think. That would have been huge, yeah. But still, it's a pretty big board. Yeah, nothing great for Netherwing. Yeah, they're really. That that two two con is much. Uh, is actually quite. Because otherwise, you could hit the. Uh, 1-1 one, one into one of the 4-4s, four, yeah. You might just play. Yeah, but for play, you still gotta have a bit of a board first. Oh well, yeah, you can play the Moark and maybe Fiendish Rides. You get four of them. Moark, Fiendish Rides, Plague, yeah, that's just about the most you could get out of it. And then there's still one thing stays alive, and if it's the Ogre, then you're in I... deep, deep trouble. Meddling is weird here. Yeah, but there is no good answers right <laughs> now. <laughs> Taunt or is a big evolve. It's the smallest, but it's also the biggest in a way. And I think the reason, by the way, why we didn't see Desert Hairs here is probably because Razvan knew that there was a lot of board clears there to be had. And Burn removed from Twisting Nether, though, so it would have definitely been, you know, taking a shot. It does try to go full clear. Ogre dead. Skargo remains. Means that the Sludge Slurper now oh, only costs one. <laughs> play it now. And plays it too. When else would you ever play it? And yeah, I think we're just gonna see the Lackey and the weapon. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense. You're gonna push down. You're gonna take assume the role of an aggressive deck. This is actually not the not the control Galakron Shaman um, that we see usually. This is a lot more aggressive variety. But it can control very well still. So. <laughs> Definitely. Ooh, Faces is not a good Yeah, move. that was underwhelming. Not As a matter of fact, all of those were pretty yeah, were mediocre. Bad. And now there's a Temple Swing incoming. Yeah, but I think From Desert in there. Desert Hair and Face. on top of that, maybe even the Sandstorm Elemental, and all of a sudden it's looking a little bit different, right? 
Uh, you can even, if you play hair and elemental, you could even then hit the weapon into the, um, the netherwing. netherwing if you really want to. All right, hair. and because of the hero power, the hair is gonna be five dudes. Well, well, we'll see what they will be. Yeah. This isn't the final evolution. It must be something good. There we got. Ooh. Violet Teacher, Ash Tongue. It's colorful. Ooh, there's a Prime. There's a very underwhelming uh, <laughs> Sky Captain, uh, sorry, Sky yeah. General Trag. Yeah. Burrowing Scorpion, also Some not great. Equally valuable two or three taunts on the right. Yeah. Do we see Gallant in here? <laughs> we might. This whole place goes nuts. Because, wait a second. Yeah, I was gonna say, now it is fully hostile. whole thing. So you can take out one of the taunts, and you can you can play something big here. Um, you hope to get something. Yeah, big. I mean you don't have to contest this stuff. <laughs> big. That's jungle imp. Hey, there's a taunt, which there's I think taunt. at this point is might be That's more useful. useful. Exactly. Now, now this is uh, the important phase. Can Razvan somehow? find a way to push through all this mess. I mean, the Sandstorm definitely helps. Um, he, def he does definitely does have to be the one to actively go and win this game. The, sand the Sandstorm uh, takes out the Horror and two of the Imps, and means that your Scorpion can then trade into the Broodmother. Mm -hmm. After that, you still have 12 points of damage if you want to be aggressive, or if you want to take out the Imp. You have the 12 points either way. Uh, he's very low in health, but the Ashtag helps with that. And quite frankly, the um, the Warrior Prime, who Zaya gets at the moment, uh, might also be pretty good. Cargath? That sounds reasonable enough. Cargath Blade Fist, I think. Sure. His fist does look very bladed. It's a blade. They chop their hand off and replace him with the blade. Yes, I know. There is... Um, Ray Zay. The, uh, the, the, the Black Hand Clan, yeah. right? That's what they are? They're insane. They're related to Rend. Alright, you could also do it this way, of course. Uh, you could use the two, three attack minions to... It seems like he's going face. I can't hate it in this situation. Yep. Everything goes. And you're back to 14 health while your opponent is now at 11. Crunch time. Right here. You can Zephyr use Storm, the... Not active. You can use the claw to t kill one of the tongs. I think you drop And the then tongs. Alex, you're on face. Just frogs and clear everything up. Right. That makes a lot more sense. Can't take risks. Uh, how much health is the impact? Yeah, that's gonna live. The yeah, impact's living, yeah. Because it only deals five. Which is kind of important, and the scrap imp lives too. And now we're looking at his opponent only having six health. He's gonna push Wait, this out of one health. One health, I guess. If he uses the claw. Does so. Uh, no reason not to. And uh, does Razvan have any out here? Or are um, he basically guaranteed to be tied up. I mean, he almost has to. Win this Galakron turn or somehow clear. That's not a Galakron. Uh, Dragon's pack is not quite gonna do much. Um, Lackey plus Faceless is gonna clear most things, but not enough. And I think using Hero Power with the Faces also doesn't do much. And yeah, he has. Th Wait, that's two taunts. Yeah, that's not. Taunts. That's not an... Wait, oh, that is enough, because they, yeah. Technically, that is enough, yeah. Um, worth pointing out that... Oh, wait, no, with the spirit actually isn't enough, right. Why did I not see the spirit bit? Spirit plus 1-1, one, one, plus Kronx in there, and then Imp in the face. That's gonna be a win. And Houston ties it up at one a piece so yes we are in for a long one most matches would have been over by this point and uh, these guys are tied up at one i mean yeah so. that, that that actually seems pretty accurate ah. a lot of matches were in like the half hour range they were fast and this one is going to be uh the grindy match we all wanted to see i believe we had games. one three two match that was under half an hour or something was it my first round match it could it was my be... first round against fenrir that's what it was yeah because it the... was all aggro you yeah, the the shaman, the Galakrond shaman too, but other than that, it was fast. And both players down to two decks, and we're gonna see oh, the druid, druid on druid violence, spell druid, both. both of them. Exactly. And what's the odds that these guys, at least to a degree, work together on this deck? Yeah, I was about to say I should have checked if yeah. they by any chance brought identical lists. I did not check. 
At least they'll be close. I mean, they'll definitely be very similar. There isn't that much room. Because you know these guys talk Hearthstone, you know. I mean, they're, they're, there's really mainly two versions of this, and there's a couple of slots where you can choose. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be surprised if they brought the exact same deck. I would have to check that. Um, but we do see very different hands here. Promising hands, though. They yeah, both sides. You like to see that. Now, of course, uh, Houston, I believe, is the one who could have more use of the coin, comparatively. True, Razvan's gonna like having that, too. Yeah, but with the wild growth into overgrowth, there would have been a yeah. better coin play than for Razvan's hand. We're gonna see the hero power here. I don't know how I feel, considering that he doesn't have a single glow fly, and he knows that aggro decks can overrun this. What is the thought about just playing a panther? Or, I should I say, playing an eagle? <laughs> You're playing a panther there? I think we might just see the growth yeah, here. For sure. I want to get to that Mount Cellar range. Wait. Yeah. Uh, if you play Wild Growth now, Overgrowth the turn after. You're there. You're there, of Got course. It. You don't have any other spells to play with it right now. I want to pick up an Overflow soon to actually fill your hand up. Yeah. I think, quite frankly, uh, Razman got a huge advantage in this match just the moment. I was about to say the moment the coin flip was Does made, yeah. Out. Because you not only have the coin in your hand, but you also have one extra part yeah. drawn. Uh, it's an extra spell, too. Yeah, so when you play Glowfly, you have two more spells compared to your opponent. And you can reach for an overgrowth next turn. Yeah. I like that. And you have taking his time, considering well, if he wants to... would be a serious problem if he plays the overgrowth and then the Glowfly next turn. There, there's no concrete answer for that at the moment. Yeah, you right now looking at whether or not he wants to um, contest the board or, or draw a card. Rather, or just, you know, throw the thing. You don't need to wild growth to be able to overgrowth next turn. So we exactly. have full-on late 4th of July tribute on the board right now. I like the idea to overgrowth here. Yeah, and um, so does yeah. Razvan, of course. Uh, we just see the birds trade. Which, I mean, if I have a glow for in my hand, I mm -hmm. don't mind control taking control of the board. And overgrowth now, overgrowth. Sleep light as an overflow is on hand. That's a huge draw, of course. But we're gonna see f five insects for Razvan War hitting the board. Presumably now. Yeah, and. Lock the mount cellar turn next turn, so he's got some serious pressure going. And it's not like Yusin has any answers. Mm -hmm. He can drop his mount cellar or overflow, but. Neither of them answers it too well, and we might What's just that? see another no. overgrowth. That seems a bit greedy. So he wants to mount cellar next turn. Maybe he feels like that's a harder thing to remove. Well, it's interesting, though I would have definitely wanted to pull the glow flies out there. Especially after the monster turn, you're not going to have that many spells. Yeah. And I think I like Overflow here, despite no healing, because Mountzeller with a single Innervate does not seem great. You could Wild Growth even twice to be able to play everything next turn. Yeah. It's going nuts. Um, I think if you Overflow now with Innervate, you have at least two things you can play with the Mountzeller. If you double wild growth, I guess, yeah, you have at least three things you could do with the Mount Cellar, right? So, yeah, might as well. It's an interesting choice here. I feel like the, the one who really gets his, the tempo at first is always going to be at an advantage. And then Houston decides that that's the case. And he does get a Porcupine, which is a pretty good pickup. Yeah, but now look at Razvan's hand, right? He has that Mount Cellar himself. He has some damage on hand. And there comes some extra spells. And Power of the Wild is definitely always an interesting one. He might not even go there unless he can Rising Winds draw into an inner weight, but solidifying that Mount Cellar board is always... <laughs> summons the... Did he summon the bird or the... the... He summoned the, he summoned bird, the yeah. bird, He got himself a porcupine as well. Another porcupine. Build a big board. And there is a Zigzor. Dude. And... I mean, Overflow now heals your mini. <laughs> it does, yeah. But you also have like a million other things you can play yeah. for the Mount Cellar. Um, Noteworthy, of course, Porcupine deals to random enemies. Nothing on both sides. So, here we go. Porcupine, if you could buff it a little bit, could also very well clear off a significant chance of your opponent's board. Who's the lottery of Mount Selling? Yeah, I think with, um, with some two spells played and then Power of the Wild. Um, and then hitting the porcupine into into 
I guess the mount cellar? And then hit your mount cellar in the mount cellar, which will live at one health. And then Porcupine is probably gonna kill uh, Salet's Pride and maybe an eagle or something. You could try to kill the hit the zig the Porcupine and the Zigzor or something or the eagle. If you hit in the they get the buff, so the monster actually dies. Smart, yeah. That yeah, that's a, what I said. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I said, and I think this is a good play. Now, of course, we we're gonna see the other mount cellar die. I have yeah. very little doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that mount cellar sit. That, um, that being said, there is a pretty good glowfly set up with the fungal fortunes here. Speaking of glowfly, so many insects. Um, ooh, that's actually interesting. You could um use crystal power to kill the mount cellar. He is a swing turn. Yeah, those are good hits. Um. I wouldn't be surprised still if we saw Glowfly come down at some point. I think it has to be Glowfly. I guess Glowfly after trades, and then you can still use Crystal Power to kill yeah. one more minion. And Iron Bark to solidify your board. Oh, Power of the Wild. Yes, of course. Power of the Wild now. Insect time. Kills the insect or Iron Bark. Iron also. Bark, yeah, I'll leave the eagle alive. Uh, Iron Bark and Power of the Wild yeah. so that it stays alive. And then he still has the mana to crystal or that. I thought he was gonna kill the wasp, but fair enough. Um but still leaves this his might be with, though, this might be it though. With one minion, This yeah. might be it. I feel like this could be really it. Says wild miscalculation? I don't know what he means though. He's, he seems to be just winning. I mean in my in my opinion, he could have taken a slightly better trade with the yeah. eagle, but Maybe that's what it's like. What do you do against this if you're, you're Houston here? You I can mean, overflow, but there's no defense, really. I think Wild Growth makes more sense. It's still a card draw. Um, but you leave more mana open to do something with. The question is, do you ever have anything in your deck that doesn't lose? I don't think so. I think uh, you want Wild Growth draw for a Crystal Power or something. Um, yeah, so with the... See, if he had gotten the Crystal Power, he could have put a Taunt on his minion. Could have... Claw plus hero power to tr take out one of the flies. I mean, he can still do that. Yeah. I don't know if he should probably do that. Uh, claw hero power, and then... You might have to waste savage. the path or kind of waste if to give the taunt. Uh, I mean, you can't afford to, mana-wise. Ooh, you have hero power. Uh, so... That leaves him with... 23 points of damage with... Not quite enough, but a lot. Fungal Fortress Fungal Fortress could find it, though. Yeah. Could That's find snappy. second Savage Roar, or what did I say? He needs seven points of damage, it probably would have to be Savage Roar. That's he not something you keep. No. I mean, this all for a single handedly basically is turns this into a, from a maybe win to a definitely win. Because, like, how are we gonna do that? Yeah, yeah, this is not gonna get removed. By the way, I still don't hate Savage Roar this turn. You could Savage right. Roar and Soul rather than your normal Savage Roar hero power for when you're going for the throat. Um, still push a significant chunk of damage and then tell your opponent, like, deal with this. He's not giving away that he does have the Savage or this thing. Sticking with what yeah, he's I mean, setting the win up for next There time. is some healing in the deck, but uh, that could also be played after just a regular attack. And I think we are going to probably see Crystal Power this turn come down as healing. Um, Sarah could build a big town. Nope. He says, he says I'm going to counter this. Going to go wide and take my shot. Saying you don't have Savage or he does have Savage or. Uh, yes, of course, if you Doesn't. taunt up one of your Power of the Wilded Glowflies, that is going to have, let me do some quick math here, six points of health, yep. which means that with Savage Roar, you would still have to hit your face in there you and the one of the minions, the or wrath. wrath in one of the minions. Mm -hmm. And then with Crystal Power healing your face, you're back to 22. I don't think they would, if he plays uh, Power of the Wild, Iron Bark, Crystal Power, which he does not, mind Red you. Stall the forest. Uh, but he'll probably then heal. I think he could have prevented the lethal, yeah. Uh, so 22, we're looking at... Um, so 15 plus 3 plus another 1 there is 19 that he can push to the face this turn. Um, actually make that slightly more because I forgot that he could wrath the dude for 3 and then hit his face in there. Yes. Which means that he can push 21 to the face. 21 is not enough. That is not enough. If Houston did that calculation, why? Because if you look at the board right now, face plus wrath takes out the taunt. Then you have Savage Roar, makes all the minions have 5 attack. Mm -hmm. So, 
that is 20 plus iron bark is 21. Uh, hero power doesn't help you because you already use it on the taunt. Uh, now, is of course possible to use wrath for draw here? You could, yeah. And find the lethal that way. That being said, if you wrath for draw, I think you're only out for lethal is another savage war, which is very unlikely. You're out for draw, and then if you don't get it, you still can, with Iron Bar, kill the taunt. I mean, you can still kill it. I'm just saying you can't produce any other lethals because at that point, you can't use your okay. face anymore. Prison Power is 2 damage. Prison Power is 2 damage, which means the same thing applies that I said before. He's gonna be 1 off. Gonna be 1 off. Does he use the Iron Bar? Yes, he does. Oh. Unfortunate order of events. <laughs> Did he actually. Ooh, did he get his time off? Yes, he did. Yeah. I don't think there was any miscalculation as he emoted there, but uh, there just wasn't any better play. That being said... Can't help but notice that, Yost uh, that uh, Houston is at, um, you know, one health. Um, He's gonna have to find some savage draws here. Nope. Iron Bark is good, Overflow is not Savage Roar. Overflow does heal you a little bit, Iron Bark is a taunt. That's a hell of a match right here, man. I don't Ooh. think there is anything here that prevents opposing lethal, meaning you have to dig, you keep digging, right? You play Wild Growth, yeah, play Overflow, excess okay. mana. Uh, Overflow doesn't leave you enough mana to play you the Savage even, Roar this turn. You can't even clear anything. No, but if he gets his own Savage Roar, but even then he's still probably lost. Because he can't kill his opponent, he will need double Savage Roar, I think, to win. And if he gets anything else, he basically is losing. Rope already running, so he has to he has to hurry this up. I mean, I think he, he took some very good trades here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He does play Overflow, yeah, if I saw overflow. it correctly. And he hit the... wait, what? Did he get the Overflow out? Yes, he yeah, did. he did, but he hit the um, the last 2-2 into the face rather than the 2-2 two -two yeah. Treant. 4 damage coming in this turn from Rising Man to the face. Is he just saving this somehow? He might just be. If he if he gets himself another... Uh, if he gets himself another sure he might just win. Which is which will be very surprising, mind you. This these druid mirrors. Yeah. Boy, the druid mirrors. If he lives, if he can survive, because he'll win just because of the because double bog beam is like basically completely clearing the board. Savage right now is just uh what sixteen plus three. Uh wait. Doesn't have lethal this turn. Plus power of the wild is twenty. But he's taking the upper hand. He can he can push twenty, but I think right now you just uh, play the bog beams, and you just take the board. Yeah, play bog beams. You want to fungal fortunes too if you pick up a seven second savage roar or something. Interestingly enough, decides to trade with the treant rather than the glowfly. That means he's not really pushing for damage, I guess. Yeah, I'm just saying that he clear up everything. Even with a less white board, um, it seems that he clears everything with trades rather than bog beam, uh, which is. Fair. I mean, if you're gonna play another Glowfly, uh, Swarm might as well. Now oh, here come the Block Beams. And there's a Swarm. No charge damage for Razvan in the deck. So does he win some other? Kalfas is obviously gone. And Big Board built from Houston. What is this match? And he gets a Hero Power in for that extra point of health. Uh, probably not this critical, but at this stage, but it's generally good to do. Um. And, and Bonk Beam is just nothing. nothing. Houston's gonna win this, unbelievable. I mean, that there is, what, like 38 points of damage they can push? Yeah, well, that's... Whoop. What is this match we're looking at? JJ, either way, you're going to be facing some some real stuff here. Yeah, man, this is... But Houston, whoop. the veteran, with a 2-1 lead over his compatriot in Raza, and so... I must say... In terms of the decks that they're bringing, I'd rather face you. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Because there, there's one clear uh, yeah. control deck to ban. In almost. terms of the level of competition, I'd Ooh. rather face neither. Yeah, it's <laughs> get him the wild card spot. Um, All right. yeah. Drew it again. Razvan sticking with what he just uh, played another marathon marathon match. We were getting pretty close to an hour here. 
So, been uh, yeah. I mean, for about fifty minutes. For and, listen, uh, the rogue is of course forced. This might be the first match of the tournament that goes for over an hour. I'm not even exactly sure. I believe it would be. We've had a fast tournament so far. I think the longest one before is like 55 or 56 mm -hmm. minutes. Ferrocat, very good top take. Up. Cartoon is not exactly what you're looking for in this matchup, I think. Fungal Fortunes, of course, is absolutely massive. He doesn't coin it because he wants to coin Overgrowth. Not to win. Bamboozle, I think, is very this sensible player. in case he tries to hit the hero into something, but Ambush makes more sense. You don't really expect that many minions to come down from hand, I think. Might as well just play up a weapon, too. So. Weapon or Bamboozle, I don't think there's any use in the Ambush. Though, of course, if a Mount Cellar comes out at some point and you have the Ambush out, then that's going to be big. Exactly. We're also seeing uh, Razvan does play Chaos Fast, too. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I noticed that during the matchup uh, that Houston was playing the Dragon Variety and Razan was playing the Kael'thas one. So that's so a different, they were, different approach. Despite uh, their, you know... They're being lab partners, their they decided... connection, they have very different decks mm. and... I mean, I guess that's more interesting for the matchup when yeah. they do face each other in this case. Um, oof. So yeah. how does Houston get off to a good start here? Because he has to be explosive. Because if he doesn't, then Razvan will soon. Yeah. Um, and fast. Interestingly enough, he decided not to play any secrets again, and he didn't attack with a dagger last turn. Oh, oh yeah, that's gonna, gonna go south potentially very fast for Houston if, if Razvan just uh, is a lot. Uh, that being said, double back someone hand is. And uh, Devoted Maniac yeah. is a good way to clear uh, to deal with gonna, those. Like, they're all going to kill half of the insects. Yeah, but I mean, listen, right? If, if you can clear already like a third of the insects for zero mana, That's... you're not necessarily doing poorly. You'll take it. And we're going to see another lackey here. It's the witchy. You probably want with Cobalt, maybe Goblin. But I guess we're just going to, yeah, we're going to see Glowfly here. And we might see Crystal Power to take out the Maniac. Full board of stuff saying do something. And Crystal Power does come down. And double backstab. Maybe Evis, you might still like it in this matchup, and most others you wouldn't. Coin, uh, uh, face and cat. Face and cat is possible. I think you do. Then you well. ran yourself out of resources, and he still has the Mount Cellar coming up. And. Yeah, next turn you have Cartoon with a little bit of defense, two. but um, it might end, have ended up, because of the strong start of the Druid, ended up being a better uh, pickup than I thought it was. Uh, generally, I think in this matchup I would much rather see something more proactive and aggressive, uh, like a shot butt or something, but given uh, the early Glossos here, might not hate it. There's an argument to be made for evolving the cat. But hmm. two drops yeah. aren't exactly all that. Um, I need some serious thinking already for Houston here. What do you want to do? I definitely don't hate Bamboozle because your opponent will probably try to clear off the cat. Um, the ambush definitely makes a lot of sense because of Mount Helen. He might also completely ignore your cat. Yes, but. I think you try to go keep the support. Hoping for taunt, no taunt. He could take a trade and try to go nuts with the mount seller. Have his hand suddenly free, of course, when we have turn seven. Oh, that soul of the force is nasty. I like that play. I like that play a lot because now he's just locking down. Just you know, play whatever. You don't have you don't have AOE. You're rogue. And he's right with that. Yeah, I mean, in this um, situation... I hope he very to few, find any answer to this. I would be a very big fan of knives. Of knives. Even fan of knives, like, you have to have, like, four, four of, of them. them, yeah. Yes. You can't even play that. You play, you play like, Moark double fan yeah. of knives? N because every Galatron Rogue ever plays those cards? The Vanish rotation to the Hall of Fame was re a really good move, uh, retroactively, because it that definitely g gives that... That class feature of rogues not really dealing with this stuff well. Which is why this is a, such a mismatch, of course, with the, the token druid. Yeah, that being said, of course, uh, 
if Razvan pulls this off, and it very much looks like That's he will, record, yeah. um, he still has to also win with, with the Shaman. Now we've, we've seen the Shaman go nuts. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite pull through, but... Shaman roll could be very interesting. Yeah. And Houston is just sitting there deep in the tank thinking, but what do you do? Two fates might be sealed? Yeah. Great. It's gonna do a lot for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's good because he might play the Galcor next turn. That being said, he's gonna be one invocation off if he does. Uh, plays Eva, Eva so he can get the taunt on the witchy. That makes that's sense. That's forced the the secrets out, the secrets to activate here with the Titanic yes. Lucky. So that's a big pickup potentially. Uh, well, actually, he doesn't because Bog Beam. But Ooh, we could use the Bog Beam if he's re. I mean, he knows sec knows the rogue secrets, right? He should Bog Beam this just to yeah, avoid I mean, all that mess. The only uh, secret you would trigger with Bog Beam, which we've already seen, it is not is Whoopie Dirty Tricks. Mm -hmm. And so he knows exactly what secrets yeah. those are. And that's always the problem I've had with Rogue Secrets, and both uh, times they were in standard. Not enough to There's really not enough secret. for them to really be as much a secret and as know what other classes. Which ones are played in which situations. Yeah. And even if you don't, like, there was like three separate triggers, yeah. just three separate secrets, and there you go. Um, so in Wild, they're a little more interesting because there's six of them now, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just rebuild this board, saying, yo, I got this. So I don't hate bog beaming the taunt here. Wait. No, I think it's a good play. So there's. He's digging for lethals. He's digging. I was hard. about to say that yeah. if you get something, there could be a lethal. Like a savage there. roar or something. Because even with just the power of the wilds, he's already at twelve. Yeah. And I'll use the wrath as a bog yeah. beam. Twelve, thirteen with hero power, fifth. 15 with both Iron Bark, not 16 with the Moonbeam, and he's gonna be too off. Not quite this time. Galakrond will be sort of the last hope here, because those secrets just sit. I mean, Galakrond is 5 armor, there is. He's only gonna draw 2 cards. So, the debate between Galakrond and the uh, and gambling on your uh, secrets. Uh, I mean, Cartoon would have also been decent, because it both heals you and it forces either spells out of the hand or. Galakrond out. Like, Taunt picked up and then picked up. We'll probably see all that. It's only gonna be a 6 6, but it's it's gonna be a 6 6. Yeah, double Bog Beam just wins it. And yes, double it Bog will. Beam. Wait, okay. double Bog Beam is, yeah, that's, that's yeah. one over lethal plus all the other ways to get Or that. Yeah. Still yeah. plays both Bog Beams because you never know what he's gonna get out of his bamboozle random yeah. 8 drop. Right. Could be something, don't want to risk that. Could be something dumb. I don't think there's any random eight drop that is gonna save everything lose here. Game, no, I don't think. It, I don't think so. But either. there is no reason yeah. to find out if the Rats and War ties it up at deuces a piece, and we're going all Oops, the way then. to uh, the last game. As was, you know, it's the best thing we could have wanted, uh, especially with these two guys, of course. Yeah, so they're definitely going yeah. over an hour. Yeah, they're, they've <laughs> been going. And that, people, is why we schedule matches two hours apart. Two hours. You never know. You never know what happens. We know the match update. Yes, it is going to be Galakron Shaman for Razvan War and Galakron Secret Rogue for Houston. win. Morgul versus Golden! Yeah. My yes! Someone who managed to imprison the most powerful demon hunter for tens of thousands of years. Or Murak. That's what they Both have the most minions on hand. That's true. Not after the Morgul bro. That's but... critical. I don't even know. I don't know this matchup particularly well, so I don't know Ooh. win rates. And isn't that already the beautiful thing about it? Who's favored in this a lot? Yeah, who's favored in this? No idea! Based on what we've seen, it would seem to be the Shaman, but then again, drawing both of those weapons is very unlikely. Yeah. Uh, the question is, do we keep Desert Hair and everything else should be gone, right? <laughs> Quest says, of course. You might keep... <sighs> it's a tough. With the Shaman, there's a lot of cards you could keep. Depend it's it's a the deck that depends a lot on the matchup you're playing. And what you're keeping. We can see these guys just really taking their time with this too. Mulligan Everything not, not gone and there. Slurper Engine! We are you look gonna up. like that. A couple of weird things for the rogue. If this shaman goes fast, it's gonna go fast. And when that happens, he's got problems, does Houston. Yeah. 
sort of hand at the moment. Houston, we have a problem. A, Houston, you got a problem. Uh, it looks like it, yeah. Because uh, we're going to see some uh, some lackiness, some engineeriness. Ooh, that's interesting. Ambush. We might just see ambush I, on one ambush on two. I, I like this prevent. I like this as like a preventative me uh, method there. And Razon has got to know what it is, right? Yeah, I feel like it's only one thing that totally makes sense. But then again, he has the stuff to trade it off very evenly. Let's see what spell he gets. They will come down. Ooh, do you like mm. the scheme? The scheme just for, you know, for like 30, if, in 30 turns. If you fall behind. Yeah, it's like the, scheme, that yeah. one thing that just is not expected that just you win with in, a, in an hour. Maybe. Hey, listen, right? I have seen similar plays. Not exactly that, but Ethereal Lackeys, you pick up a board clear while playing an aggro deck. And like at some point you fall behind, you clear the board and then you build back up. down. Seen it happen. First Quest, hand. Quest progressing. How about seal fate team? Could seal the rat's fate. He seals the face's fate. Oh, it says unnamed character. I don't Rare know. use of the situation, but he seems to be taking the aggressive option here. Shadow strike, I tell you. Oh. Um, of course, secret's also possible, but yep. he has his ambush, dude. Is he literally called Amsher? I'm not sure. He might be. What is it? It's the broken ambusher, he broken ambusher. because he's a broken he's and a broken. he's ambushing people. It's ambushing. Rue. Um, Rue. I don't hate Rue. Lackey first here. He decides to, to draw, go draw first. first. In case you pick up a rat, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I had a similar thought with the Lackey, where it's like, I, I'm more expecting to... A lot of one-cost spells you would mostly want here anyway. Doesn't even roll Lackey, though. That's interesting. Oh, he wants the Lackey and then the faceless next turn. That's a good plan. Lacking the faceless, maybe. Or just the invoke. And are we, we gonna see another secret here? Are we gonna see Pharaohcat evolve? Are we gonna... Hmm. Probably not uncommon what Evis into face. It seems pretty bad, again. but Amber seems possible. Also, you see all those corrupt elementalists? You know how many rush storms are gonna come out of that soon? All of them! All of them. Especially if the quest is done, it'll be all. So, uh, face is not possible quite yet this turn. With another, yeah, I main. like I like the invoke here. Maniac deals very nicely with the ambusher, but there's another one, which it true doesn't quite deal with. But then well, again, it does deal with all of them, right? Because hmm? the maniac has rush, and the stormy summons also has rush. Yes, deal with both ambushers. But they have three health. You can still play lucky now. Maybe pick up a zap or something. Yeah, that would be something. Otherwise, he will leave one of the ambushes at one health. Now, that being said, Explosive Evolution might be interesting. You do play Desert Hairs. Lightning Breath looks pretty good right now, but I don't think we'll have a lot of impact later on. Also, you don't have dragons. That was and you already have one scheme. Yeah, yeah I like the evolution. There is the, the quest done perfectly. Um, and uh, we're going to see him probably utilize that a lot, because this seems to be going into the value direction once again, as is not a big surprise here. Maniac is interesting. You rush it into the 1-1, I think, and then you evolve it. Be really cheeky. And step, and step the other guy in the back. Sure. I like the idea. Or even ambush him, depending get? if you get a taunt. You That's don't a get a taunt, so you... St yeah. That's a good buff. I mean, quite frankly, most 5-drops are a good value out of the 2-1. True. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Wait, is, is it already a five? Scheme. It is it's already a five, five. yeah. We discovered a turn one. Very early. <laughs> That's just nasty. Nice. It's like, yeah. I've been keeping that. <laughs> he used to just, yeah. Just recognizing it. Like, wow. What what, a f what foresight for him to pick that. Uh, Lucky Fences is possible. Lucky to Dragon is also possible. Yeah. Feral or something is also possible. Oh, Bronx to draw your Galakrond is possible, but then you don't have Bronx to your opponent. Get yourself a big advantage by having Galakrond. Uh, that being said, um, Galakrond is currently still... Yeah, needs two more invocations to be fully effective. Time to get it. That being said, it could still fish in Malifa at some point, even with just two cards drawn. Yep. And we're gonna see... Uh, Invocation of Frost, yeah, I mean... Freeze that guy, get him out of here, I like it. Um, yeah, and then next turn you could Hero they Power, Prop the Elementalist, faces. and... He is going to True get himself flag. some lackeys, and... 
Stubali. If one of them deals damage, like this one kind of does, it's almost there, and then you can freeze the face. <laughs> freeze the face. And yeah. then kill it, kill yeah. Kong, so. And you can still discover two spells. That value machine of that shaman, um, shaman hero power can never be underestimated. It's, sure. it's insane. Yeah. Dragon's pack, instant pick. Dragon's pack, instant pick. You, you want to go? You play? We're playing the value game now, says Razman once again, and uh, now it's gonna come down to who who does it better. I think here I might like the um, draconic lackey. See what dragon you get, and then faces it. Mm -hmm. If the dragon is nobody want to play right now, could play cat too first. Uh, or, or yes, I think you're gonna get something better out of the lackey, beverage. likely, than out of the cat. Also, you are, if you're killing it, sacking less stats, technically. Um, yeah. We play them both before Faceless anyway. Oh, right, yeah, you can, you can just play them both, yeah. Uh, Draconic Lackey can give you, for six mana, it could give you the, uh, the Evasive Worm. You might like Cobalt. One mana spell, Sinister Strike. Sinister Strike. Uh, freaking Hail Galatron. No, that's not what it's called. What is it called? Galatron. Praise Galatron! That's something you definitely like because you need some invocations. Because I'm trying to think, right? Are there other one mana rogue spells in standard besides those two? Yeah, yeah there might be. I'm, I'm not, I don't mean a rogue. I have no idea. There is two active dragon packs right <laughs> here. Yeah. Why not? Especially since you can't corrupt Elementalist and Hero Power this turn because you're overloaded! Dragon's Pack was good. Remember Dragon's Pack? I do remember Dragon's Pack. Remember pre uh, Dragon's Pack? I remember. Pack. That, that Galakron Shaman used to be... Real. How do we feel about Spellkin for... Um, like Spelkin. For Praise Galakron so that your faces can more effectively kill the taunts? I like it. Um, Sensor Strike might be useful yeah. for surprise lethal later on, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if there'll be any surprise lethals in this game. Okay. I mean, what a match. There isn't really that many great plays right now, I feel like. You could always sack the cat and player bamboozle, but that's very transparent. Because then you could evolve random 8 drops uh -huh. out of your 4-3s, which is still almost always going to be beneficial. I don't know, man. This is such a complicated position for both these guys, man. And Damn. we see the spell can come down can and... Down. Oh, Plague of Madness and Deadly Poison! Be useful here. I forgot about both of those existing. Deadly Poison is... Deadly Poison is... Close. Very classic card, literally. Mm -hmm. Might seen be this. basic, I don't know. I haven't seen it in so long that, you know... Yes! It is, it is a basic card. I haven't seen it in such a long time. See, that is just because the odd rogue days are over. True. Sadly. And the King's Bane days are over. They're all over. Um, yeah, those two decks both ran it. Uh, this and could be... Uh, I think you played it to good effect here. Yeah, this could be where um, Elementalists take over. Mm -hmm. Hero Power Elementalists. Just Still two active dragon packs, but now you just need to keep churning, right? You, you probably like your value with the quest being done already. How do both decks have so disgusting value right now? Like... <laughs> That's that's what makes a really good tournament deck, by the way, with both these guys, and you can tell they laugh together because they came with similar strategies, although be it different decks. You want decks that can pop off, that can kill your opponent turn six, and you want decks that can go until the, the turn limit and generate infinite value. The shaman does it really, really well, especially with the quest done early. And the shaman is at relatively low health, and we know rogues can have burst yes, damage. Don't true. underestimate the one deadly poison there as well. Uh, there is a deadly poison. Um, Correct. That being said, without the claw, I'm not sure yeah. if Galakrond can Galakron produce really surprise lethals that well. Not that close. Uh, so the question is, do we just go for it, draw two cards? Get five armor? Hmm, you might. Don't pass go, collect your 100, 200, whatever dollars it yeah. is these days in Monopoly. Ooh. I don't know, man, way too much, probably. Um, hmm... Berserker Faceless doesn't look great. Um, dirty Tricks would be possible to get you some draw. But then again, I feel like your lethal window is gonna close sooner rather than later. Yeah. 
it, it could really be a long game here. If uh, if there's no lethal windows coming up, we're gonna take it into it. Don't take it the distance. The question is, do you think Kronk's, uh, sorry, Galatron can draw you uh, twelve points of damage? And I don't <laughs> think so. He'll stabilize. Just uh, take it easy. Put the faces down. But uh, and I think keeping the knife up is presence. um kind of important here. Well, that sends on clears the board. With hero power, it and there we does. go. And then you can still play your Corrupt Elementalist. Full board. Or your Kronks to draw your Galakron Two twice. Galakr <laughs> if you had two in the deck, it would work. That's true. Now you'd, you'd want to dab that Kronks for um, for 10 damage later on. He does play Kronks though, it's interesting. Yeah, and I think Galakron is, feels kind of forced. Because he's saying like Galakron next turn just wins for me, basically. Because I got all these storms down, he can do anything about it. It's a cat and a black sex stunner. Oh, that's painful. Yeah, and the stunner is not gonna be great because, like, stunner is like the worst card in this matchup in general. Yeah, because like, of the Balakrest and MGs. Ah, that that, that is disgusting. Yikes! Hate. He's gonna see what he can get, but Wasteland Assassin is yeah. not it, and there and is gonna be a. He will be. Huh, hard pressed to do anything about. Oh, how the how storms. about how about Cobalt Lackey into face and then stun the Lackey? <laughs> he might, yeah. I mean, his listen, right? His window is closing either way. I didn't expect him to get twelve damage off the Galapond, but yikes! But getting nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like stunner the Prongs and just be like, hey, hey, run it back, bro. <laughs> Maybe no. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be game. It's I mean unless there's some miracle left to be seen. But what do you? How do you defend a Galakron now? Also three active dragons packs. <laughs> and what is this value? Hits the <laughs> poison weapon because he gets the claw. I'm taking him. I'm taking him. Yeah. And there's just there's a hero board power. full of stuff. Right? Summon eight. Uh, some four eight eights with rush. And Razvan will take this. I feel like. Oh, there, there is. I believe he tri just triggered a bamboozle. Yeah, but what? Anything could happen with bamboozle. It's true. It's gonna be a random four drop. And it's, it's gonna, gonna be Bolt <laughs> Master. And that's gonna be. It seems like game. Now, of course, you can stun one of the eight eights. Taunt one, you stun one. Taunt. Three, three active dragons pack. <sighs> This is crazy. I'm also not looking forward to facing Razvan. <laughs> oh, that, that, that he's still easy. winning, by the way, because um, he's going to summon enough Rushes to take that 4-5 out. See, I was thinking about banning the Mage, but I might just be banning the Shaman at this point. Because Razvan? Yeah. yeah. You have to go back to the study books again, again for this one, man. Hmm... There is another taunt to be had there. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, there's another taunt, that's correct. It's one turn. That means Maybe. Only, only taking 24 to the face. Might save your turn. No! Well, you secret, you stun one of the guys. Yeah, then he doesn't get another taunt. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you do on the stunner, right? Oh, right, stunner is free, yeah. That matters. Sort of the only way you, you, you can see a way to survive another turn. But living one more day is not gonna save you. This shaman is filthy. Wait, do you though? Need still summons enough rot. Oh right, the hero. Is it bamboozle up? Bamboozle's up. The bamboozle's so you're up. living on a bamboozle right now. Actually, the thing is though, that means that the hero power can kill any taunt. Because it's gonna bamboozle it and it's more likely than not not gonna be another taunt. Eight, eight. And uh, that is a nice dragon. He's gonna summon a lot of six sixes, lot of I'm things, telling you. But Razvan War is going to the semifinals as he takes it with that filthy shaman. What? Dude, this deck is good. I have an inclination that neither one of us is gonna make it to the final. Uh, a bit tough. A bit tough. Listen, I, uh, history says I have 50% against Sparrowhawk. This one? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's we'll the pretty let me, good game plan. Let me Razvan the... War takes a 3 2 win over his compatriot Houston. Is, oh, as a, the newcomer, by the way, first timer, was recruited by Houston, who's probably regretting all his life choices right now, to the to the tournament. And now he's taking him out, he's going to semifinals. 
I think we need to take this guy even more seriously than we have. Uh, if he does, the, if he does make make it past you, and the, the odds say that we probably might lose, uh, European Championship would be a big one. Yeah, especially uh, you know looking at that lineup, I there's two decks that I'm relatively weak against, and that I feel like are I feel like I'm gonna definitely not win three. I mean, not yeah. expected yeah. to, but I feel like there is virtually no way I'm winning three 0 because. Whichever deck I'm giving him out of his first two decks, he's probably gonna win with. Yeah. Um, wow. And then people are I don't love the rogue. I generally ban the rogue. Oh, you can't afford to ban this. Rogue. Not in this <laughs> case, no. But but even then, I might not. The rogue is actually seems like the weak point for a lot of these people at the moment. I mean, the, my I think my one solace at this point is that Razum was playing the kale variety of spell druid. Yeah. Like that gotta work against that somehow. I, I mean I've said it before, I think I could 3-0 against Spell Druid. You could, you could try, yeah. yeah. That's not to say that I think I will. Yeah, it'll be it'll be tough. So the last four people stand for the European bracket. It is going to be Sparrowhawk versus me, and it's gonna be Razvan versus JJ. One of those four people will bear mm. a crown. And uh let's hope it's one of us. But uh, I can, I, I somehow doubt it. It'll be a tough one. These guys, um, they're for real. And Razvan War definitely came to make a name for himself. He's moving on, of course. Houston, thank you very much for being there. And uh, we know you'll be there next time. Probably going to be working with the Razvan. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming you're only going to make each other better. Because this today was just a phenomenal match from start to finish. These are super evenly matched, these guys. And... Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. What a match. Maybe the match of the tournament so far. This is one of the better ones we've seen and probably the longest as we went an hour and 15 minutes or something here. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Drop a like on this video to support these competitors because they truly deserve it. Um, my shirt looks like it says Houston 316, but it says Austin. I'm not, I'm not, uh, rooting for anyone <laughs> here, so I'm, I'm fine that's with kind that. of look I just noticed that when I looked at the camera myself. Uh, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's not Houston 316, it's Austin, of course. I'm not, I'm not partial here. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to Trash Game TV if you don't want to miss the rest of this. And we have a couple more coming up for the Americas Conference, of course, to determine the semifinals there. Should be some hot games. And uh, then we're going into the big leagues because when the semifinals start, that's when we play for real. That's when Hearthstone gets played on a new level historically. Uh, yes, you would think so, yeah. but have you seen these quarterfinals? Seen Even them. some of the first round matches. I've seen them. I've seen them. They've been good. I'm not sure if we can take this to another we're level, man. It. We're going there. We're trying. Thank you for watching. Join our Discord server. Link in the description. We're gonna see you there soon. And uh, until next time, that's it. That's it.